Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Phoenix Wright, Rise from the Ashes. I guess we're going to start this out now, just before the trial. So, what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all, the victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And the different suspect was arrested at the same at the other crime scene. Lana! Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you for too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So how'd it go? It's as Mr. Wright suspects. The police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't see capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana! Don't tell me you... Much to my regret, I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Skye. Hmm? We discovered traces left by a certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. You found Officer Marshall's... traces? Blood-stained fingerprints, to be exact. <laughs> that, that's the trump card I've had on my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Skye? Do what you have to, have to do, Mr. Wright. I really don't want to put him out the stand, but... Well, it's the time for the trial. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is... <laughs> oh, I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach criminal affairs from the prosecutor's office. The victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, right? That was more. I hear the victim is in, from the evidence room was just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow, this is one messed up trial. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today, I will present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In doing so, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what set, mis what set Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things, even though he doesn't know what he's going on himself. Uh, and that's supposed to be an admirable trait? Very well. Let the trial resume. On that day of the crime, what exactly transpired the police department? Not nah, the police department. Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls... The suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Wait, they're gonna call... Oh, boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. Oh, dear. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir! I'm Officer Mike Meese, sir! My conclusion is, uh... That would be murderer, sir! Uh... Uh, so you're telling us that you're a professional killer? Sir, it was me, sir! I'm the one who did it! I'll never kill everyone again, sir! Sir, you gotta believe me, sir! Uh, actually, what we'd like to hear from you is, Sir, I'm going to call upon the younger generation, sir! I'm personally with accents when the adults cannot possibly comprehend! Please, Mr. Edwards, sir, help me, sir! Officer Meekins! Y yes sir! Give us your report of the crime. Consider that in order. Yes, sir! As you wish! After all, I'm part of the generation that must be told what to do, sir! You can't fault him for his lack of enthusiasm. Crime report, sir! Although it was not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the secu security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir! I was suddenly attacked! Fought for my life! Then I... I did it! After that, I passed out. Well, another officer smacked me awake! Hmm. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you? Don't do that before they do it to you! 
That's the Meekins family motto, sir! I see. Then you fainted and the colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir! He knocked me upside the head, sir! Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. What I need here is more info to work with. Well, this guy's easy to mess with. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence rooms that day. Really? Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir! I'm in charge of hiring new recruits, sir! Yikes! Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transfer was taking place on the day of the crime, which meant many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir. The Blue Badger? Yes, sir! The lovely police medal got created by the head detective, sir! I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transfer process. That was my sole mission of the day, sir. Uh. I see. Sounds like a very uh, important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around that I relocated the blue batch to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. Really? In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir! And the one I have one right about my neck! So then, your ID number should be listed in here, right? There it is! I found it! That is the one right there! Could you please read the number? Yes, sir! It's 498 The uh, What? 5989596. I can't read numbers fast. That's my own problem. That's my number, sir! I see. Uh huh. Then the number 4899596 is shown to be used twice! Please explain, witness. It's no real mystery, sir! The first time when I went is when I relocated the blue badge from the evidence room. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. I see. So it was during the, that second time the when? Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man at the security screen. Huh. So I guess those were Meekins then. Huh. Alright. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir! I was suddenly attacked! What? So you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir! A knife! Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you? What happened then? Well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. I was what I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to sustain him. Then that, that's how he got his gash in my hand. Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be... When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked. I grabbed the man by his collar. I fought for my life, and then I, then I did it. Now, when you say that, what exactly do you mean when you say, did it? I know I don't look that tight, but I really know. But I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife from him. You, you took his knife. I spun him around and performed a disarming maneuver. Made him close his eyes like a man. Uh, I, uh, I, I see. He must have been desperate. Next thing I knew, his, his white coat was drenched in the sea of my blood, and then, then the next thing I knew, yes, he punched me right in the face, sir. Really now? And after that, I passed out, until another officer smacked me awake. Uh, okay. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious! Oh, right. <laughs> According to the report, from the officer that woke up the witness, it was at about 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too! I woke up crying tears of pain! That's nice. I, I mean, it it's nice that you recovered, that is. When I came around, though, I was made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your your mission? Yes, sir. The blue badge, sir. I turned to the off to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, your honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was that man th the officer murdered? Murdered. Really, the victim? He's got a point. Um, 
Yes, Officer Meekins? With regard to that, sir. Take a look at this. It was sent to my cell. Chief Gant delivered it to me this just this morning, sir. The chief delivered it? What is that? A videotape? Yes, sir! That's absolutely right, sir! Videotape, sir! It contains photos from the security camera in the office room! Objection. What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape, and then was told that it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. Well then, let's have a look. Show us video. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Oh, please stop using that word, murder, sir. It scares me. A videotape of a real murder. Just what are we getting ourselves into? Um, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I just can't. Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? What the heck was that wriggling piece of plywood? Sir, that is why I enjoy the entire criminal affairs department, sir. It's the blue badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? <sighs> this video tape. Now we have this video tape toy or not? It doesn't even show anything. Yes. Well, anyway, this tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter uh, someone in the evidence room, and some sort of activity did take place. Your Honor. Instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that alright with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir! As you wish, sir! So about this mystery man? His face can't be clearly seen in the video. But there's no question that the other person was Detective Go Goodman, sir! I mean, he opened the locket, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do! The, the locket he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir! So it must be him! No one else could have unlocked it! Was this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker, equipped with fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean... The victim at the crime scene would have to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead. But everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. I think I saw something funny on that tape. His face can't be clear to see in the video. Really? Tell me, were you able to get a good look at him? At the face of the man who attacked you with a knife? So, sir, if you must label those people as being seen or not seen with the man's face, I believe I would classify it as the, the latter? The latter? But you were standing right in front of him, were you not? More into the point, you are you are the person who fought him, aren't you? Oh, yes, sir. But I didn't get a clear look at his face, sir. I'm not the kind of guy who looks directly at people when talking with them, you see. Yeah, that's a good trait for a police officer. <laughs> sir, this still, I'm sure it was him. I bet my badge on it. But there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. Oh, really? But you don't know that for sure, do you? You never actually saw Detective Goodman's face. Well, I suppose you might say that. That is, if you must label people as having seen or not seen ha seen it. Since his face cannot be identified in the video, only you can verify it. Oh, why is everyone looking at me? 
If I had to label your stance as disturbing or... Ugh. Meekins! <laughs> Having been shown a questionable video at best, we are not in the best of moods. Now please be more certain when you testify. Yes, sir! You claimed the man who brandished the knife at you was Bruce Goodman. Tell us to why you are positive it was him. I mean, he opened the locker when he required, to, which de required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. Yeah, I remember that. About these lockers, is there no other way to open them? No, sir. I tried myself all kinds of methods in the past. They only respond to registering fingerprints, sir. I wonder what kind of methods he's tried. If the man opened the locker's lock, which only responds to the, its registered fingerprints, then he must have been the person that the locker was assigned to. Exactly my point, sir! And this, too! The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir! Really? How do you know that information? I've heard rumors, sir! From people in the, in the know, sir! People in the know? The work is in the department cafeteria, sir! They keep me informed! They also listen to my romantic trouble, sir! Uh, for the record, the open locker did indeed belong to Detective Goodman. I verified this information through a more reliable source. So the victim opened the locker with his own fingerprint. So it must be him! No one else could have unlocked it! Here's where I have the problem. I'm gonna go back to... I remember seeing something odd about that security security tape. Now... I'm pretty sure someone else could have unlocked it. Or rather, it's impossible. But I have a feeling... Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. It does? I don't see anything contradictory. Uh-huh, really? Objection overruled. Try to think before you make accusations, Mr. Wright. Oh, uh, that didn't go so well. It must have been the wrong statement. That's the one. Sorry. This is the one. This evidence clearly reveals a contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are that evidence and the statements just now related? Th they aren't, are, are they? <clears throat> Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making accusations. I don't think that won me any points with the judge. Hmm. Well... Really? Well, I think I'll just press this just in case. However, the most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. Sir! If I may have said something, sir. Please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. It was his hand that tried to thrust his, his knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can testify in enough to this, sir. Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is, unless the defense can find a problem with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. Is there a problem with the security video? Is there a problem with it? Actually, there's many problems, but I can think of one. Regarding the video contained in this tape, there's one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to the possibility that the man may not be Detective Gum the Goodman. What? This video contains such a contradiction? Interesting. Your Honor, I may have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? I propose we have the defense point out the, to us this alleged contradiction in the video. He would want me to point it out. Mm -hmm. Very well. Proposal accepted. Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us this contradiction you speak of. I have to point out the problem in the video. This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, Mr. Wright. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, and pause the video. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. 
Please don't play it too many times. I can't stand watching this video. How did this guy ever become a police officer? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman? No, no, keep going. Let's see. It wasn't here. It was empty. What's that? Is that... Is that supposed to do that? It's lit. It... It's lit. It... It's lit. It's open. Hmm. There. The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Hmm. Yes, that's just, that is strange. So it certainly seems unnatural about that. What could it mean? Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Wright. But you seem to have forgotten the point of this exercise. The point? What you are looking is for one thing and one thing only. Something that indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman. Oh, yeah. Oof. I almost walked right into the defenseless trap. I'll place one arrest, sir! <sighs> Need to slow down and tackle these things one one piece at a time. Now what do I do? I want to play this video again. J just let me try this again. Just remember one thing, right? Every time you point your finger, someone gets hurt. But he's the one pointing his finger. I'll now play the security tape again. There's something else. I'm pretty sure. Right. I'm pretty sure my first guess was right. This thing was open. This thing. The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Officer Meekins! Sir! Do you need me, mean me, sir? As I understand it, the locker's apparatus works like this. When you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If the print matches... Registered data, the the light turns on, and the lock is released. According to my very limited exercise, that's the way I understand it, sir! If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. When it went over to the locker, the lights... It's on, and then... As you can see, all the other lockers are off. But when he goes over... When the victim reaches the handle to open the locker, let's rewind a little earlier. The before he came in. Here, notice the light? What's this? It's already lit! Mm-hmm. Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle! <laughs> He's really gotta stop that. Order! Order! What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker's locks are controlled by an electric system. When a door is shut, a sensor is triggered. And the lock is automatically locked. Oh, I know. It must have broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert on this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. Oh well. It was good just... It goes to show that novices should keep their mouths shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes. Why wasn't the locker locked? Me, Your Honor? Uh, yes, well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss, Scienti Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um, maybe something like jammed the electronic system? Something jammed the sensor? Say. There's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too! There's gotta be another clue somewhere in this footage. Very well. Let's inspect the video once more. The locker wasn't locked. Mr. Wright, please point out the cause for this. Before you point this out in an attempt to spoil it. But let's see. There. That thing! Right there. Take that! Please watch closely. 
This is the continuation of the part one of the part I showed you earlier. The man walks over to it. What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir, it's been my experience that things fall out when doors are opened. I have to fall out and roll great distances when I open my cat. We can't be sure that item was in the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In... Sir, inserted? This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times it gets stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. Instead of the door closing, my tie chokes me. But the object would have to be extremely thin to fit the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator. But at the crime scene, there just might have been something that fits the description. But, but sir, by insulator, you don't mean... I think I finally got this figured out. Very well. Will the defense please present the relevant evidence? What was this insulator that was stuck in the locker door? Insulator means it's made out of rubber. I found this near the locker. A thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that was in the victim's locker. It has a tag that says SL9 incident. <laughs> The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. But that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is this not so, Officer Meekins? Sir, it could have been so, sir! He's really gotta stop doing that. Order, order, order! So, we are, are we to believe then that the victim whom victim who this vi witness stabbed in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility and nothing more. That victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Uh, sir! Me, sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. <sighs> oh, you mean that, sir? Of course, sir. Is this a joke? Very well, begin your testimony. Mystery man? Um, two. There's one more thing that proves a man is Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective has used his ID card. Are you serious? An ID card record. I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. Funny, I do too. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. Just before the crime. Hmm? Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing that does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too, although it doesn't make much of a difference for me. There were only a few cases up for transferal there, and most were cleared up by noon. Right, I see. Now, let us move on to the cross-examination. If you must. Let's go on, then. There's one other thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman, sir. Really? So, unlike your earlier testimony, you believe this to be rock solid, do you? Yes, sir. Solid as stone, sir. If my hand weren't wrapped in bandages, I'd even give the V for victory sign, sir. Couldn't he just use his right hand for that? Let me, let's hear him out. The witness can't afford to make any more mistakes. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. 
We know that. Is that ID card? Is that card hanging from your neck? One of these ID cards? Yes, sir. The card right next to my cuff, sir. I keep it here so I won't ever forget it. But what if someone were to steal it from you, keeping it out in the open like that? Maybe I shouldn't be wearing it around my neck. <laughs> Remember when I said two out of three times my tie gets stuck in the car door when I get out? Well, the remaining time my ID card gets stuck. Instead of the door closing, my ID card chokes me. Maybe I should just leave this one alone. At any rate, each police officer has only one ID card. Both the police department and prosecutor's office can attest to this. Mm -hmm. Please proceed with your testimony. When his ID was card is used, there's a rec there's a record of it. Yes. Let it be noted that this is rec the record to wi the witness referred to. Let me see. Yes, that would be it, Detective Goodman. What's the matter? A according to this, Mr. Edgeworth. Your name is on here! <sighs> so it is, Your Honor. Not that prosecutor again. Hey, maybe he's behind all this. Being a prosecutor, he could hide the evidence. Mommy, is that man in blue a murderer? Shh, don't stare at him. You've got the wrong color, kid. It would seem the inquiry committee will want to speak with you again today. I have nothing to be ashamed of regarding my actions or their consequences. For now, let us continue with the cross-examination. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. It must be so difficult for him. At the time of the crime, the detective had used, like, his card. Wait. Earlier, I believe you testified that when you asked the man to show his ID card. He pulled a knife on you. Yes, sir! He didn't show me any car ID card, sir! Don't you think that's odd? I mean... If he had his ID card, all they had to do was show it to you. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. Maybe he's just panicked! Everything stems from contradictions. Let's point them out, then. Mr. Wright, what do you think? I'm... confused. What? The problem with this ID card testimony is, too, is far too obvious. It's not like Esworth to miss something like this. You're thinking too hard about it. Come on, let's show them what we've got. Alright. So. He had used his card. But. Why do I have it? Wait one moment, Mr. Officer Meekins. I'm not gonna wait any, sir! I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. <clears throat> When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room in the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. A lost item report? It's only half completed. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess. You believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure. But there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. Order! Order! So now, what does this all mean? It can only mean one thing. It doesn't require much thought. The man Officer Meekins accounted in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Order! 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 Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defense. Uh huh? Bravo, Mr. Wright. B bravo Allow me to, sum to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15 on the day of the crime, the man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds that support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? 
That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murderer in the evidence room is also a fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. Uh, th that is... Well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago, you seemed content to be pointing your finger around. This isn't good. <sighs> well, well. It seems you've finally realized exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Miss Edgeworth. The defense has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this video is a fake, which means a murder did not take place at the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So... So the real crime could only take place in one location, the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The murderer being Miss Lana Sky, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. A trustworthy witness. Observe the moment the defendant used the murder weapon. Ah! Uh-oh. I messed up. I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. That activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Mr. Officer Meekins encountered? And where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Hmm, just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright! You have to do something, or else Lana... What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Well... Objection! One moment, Your Honor! What now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're objecting to what you just proven. <clears throat> no, of course not. But I almost walked right into the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. In fact, it, very show it showed very little. Now I look at it. However, it cannot be said that it's unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. The defense demands further examination in the, into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor? If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses would be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident in the police department to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. <sighs> this just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor, the defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh? Whom do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright, this person whom you would have testify. What is his or her name? Officer Jake Marshall. Marshall. Yep. Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? I can't let him know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the de police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Hmm. Very well. The court will take a 30-minute recess while the witness is... Uh, is subpoenas. Is subpoenaed. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court in recess. Whew. That was close. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Huh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you've figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured anything out, actually. 
Lana. You're the one who knows everything. Emma. You always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Oh, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? Ugh. You've got a lot of nerve, pal. Making a detective runner all around while while on duty. Then top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey. Hey, 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 hey! I didn't see you there, Miss L this guy. That's okay. So, have you bought what I asked? Oh. Oh, 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 oh! Oh, 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 oh! You mean this right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? <sighs> Never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the SO9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident? But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well to read them. I can't believe you, the Chief Prosecutor, were a witness in this case. Miss Guy was a witness? Well, that was nice of her. Take it from me. You don't want anything to do with the serial murders. Uh, uh. Duh. Oh, what? Now, now you bought your stuff, you're just gonna ignore me? Uh, Emma, but, but why? Why is your name in here? What? My name's in there? I don't know. Unless... No, it couldn't be. Lana, this SL9 incident, is that... That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of, a, of the world knew it as... The Joe Dark Killings. The... Joe Dark... No. No, Lana. That's over with! No! What? Emma, wait! Oh, she ran away. Uh, you know what? I just remembered. I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. Oh. Jake Marshall. Angel Star. Damon Gaunt. Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. I better take a good look at this file. I'm gonna need it. Yeah, I know I messed up during that trial, but that was because this case is very difficult. Oh, dear. Oh, this is the most painful case I've ever had. At least that I remember in the Phoenix Wright series, anyway. Well, I guess I'm going to go read these case files. So, um, so, uh, yeah. I guess I'll see you around. Case files. Yep, see you when we continue the trial. This is Luigi Man 64D. See you next time.